Welcome to the Power of Lifting podcast. I'm Eric Cafferty, owner of the Mecca Gym. I am a strength and conditioning coach and a contest prep specialist. The focus of this podcast is to dive into the mindset and the drive of people who have done incredible things with their lives. Let's reclap. Let's and let's, and let's we don't need going. to reclap. Well, you okay. can just redo it. Unless okay. you want to clap for mental reasons. I'm going to clap for mental <laughs> reasons. <And> so, <laughs> we're getting this off on a roll. Oh, man. So the Power of Lifting podcast. We have a, a special, special guest today because uh, she's our, our very own trainer, Laura. And so typically we have guests from outside of our organization come in and we talk about you know, the, the power of, you know, diet and exercise and things like that based off of their experience and things that they've done. Not that Laura hasn't had great experience and done amazing things, but we're going to talk more about the, you know, clinical and applicable side of, uh, diet, nutrition, exercise, and overall health and well-being. So health and wellness associated with, you know, what we do at the Mecca in terms of, you know, programming and nutritional recommendations and other aspects of health and wellness that people don't think about super often. So very relevant topic, obviously, with the current uh, global situation going on, a.k.a. coronavirus, Um, COVID-19, where, you know, the the vid, where the majority of us, you know, a lot of us at the gym have had it. Um, None of us have caught it from the gym because... Um, it's definitely my theory that COVID does not spread in the gym because we're all spaced apart. Nobody's making out usually. And, um, (laughs) yeah, it's just, it's, there's a lot of open air and, you know, viruses just aren't going to spread in an environment like that, like they would say in a hospital or an environment where you're very close breathing on each other, things like that. So anyway, uh, with the current situation, um, going on health and wellness has definitely become a, you know, much more in the spotlight uh, topic, or at least it should be, it should be a topic of conversation because, you know, like I said, a lot of us here have had it and um, yeah, nobody that, you know, regularly resistance trains and, you know, has a healthy diet and, you know, does, does a lot of the other things that we associate with health and wellness has gotten you know, very sick from it. And obviously it's, it's healthy people, right? Healthy people. Mm-hmm. And, and really a low percentage of people are really negatively impacted by it. But if you're out of shape and, you know, overweight and have, you know, those as risk factors, it certainly, um, you know, opens up your vulnerability to not just COVID, but to, you know, a lot of other illnesses and, you know, those, you know, what heart disease, number one killer, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. that that's been killing tons and tons of people for, you know, how long has that been the number one killer for a long time? Right. So, you know, that's one of the main reasons why we're here as a, as a gym, obviously we, we have a niche where, you know, we coach competitive bodybuilders, we coach competitive powerlifters, strongman, all that stuff. But, you know, that's not all that we do. We all spend a lot of our days coaching people that need, you know, general health and fitness guidance, you know, we're all experts in general health and fitness, the bodybuilding portion of it, you know, is a, an expertise that's definitely founded upon, you know, this, this similar evidence-based methodology as, you know, general health and fitness. So we have tons to offer people that are just looking to get in shape, um, and not necessarily compete, you know, and I would argue to say that our expertise lets us be better at that than, you know, other places because we do have that next level associated with, with what we do. And we all have the education to back it up. So absolutely, Laura, tell us a little bit about what you do now currently and how you're using that moving forward. Yeah. So I am a clinical exercise physiologist. Um, I do work for St. Luke's. I work particularly in cardiac and pulmonary rehab, as well as the lifestyle medicine department. And I also train here at the Mecca. Um, And in doing that, so what that certification allows me to do, besides being also a certified personal trainer and some other certs, is that I can work with clinical populations. Now, that means anyone who has hypertension, anyone with high cholesterol, maybe musculoskeletal issues, um, heart disease, pulmonary issue, prediabetes, um, obesity, metabolic syndrome, which 
90 percent of our population is on its way there Mm. so you know really looking at all these other issues that people are dealing with and how it's affecting their health and wellness and how we can optimize exercise nutrition sleep emotional wellness all of that together in order to make them their best selves phenomenal so you mentioned you're all our experts around here I am not. So I have the opportunity to ask these questions and kind of uh, guide the audience about what they may be thinking and what definitely I've been thinking overall. Because as experts, I feel like you guys have this, you see an issue, especially related to health. You're like, I know how to fix it. And these people, they experience something just like, oh my gosh, we have COVID-19. Now there's no toilet paper anymore. What do I do with my life? (laughs) Right? It's just like, am I going to die? Buy a bidet. (laughs) Buy a bidet. Buy a bidet. Oh my gosh. That's just a plug for bidets because they're incredible. They're incredible. (laughs) Anyway, so I think there's a little bit of this hysteria going on. and some fears, but we're here to kind of educate, bring it in. Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. We're going to be good. So, Laura, where, just specifically going back, um, what kind of made you focus on more health and wellness as, as this regard? So, I think, like, you know, going back, I was always an athlete. And then, you know, you get into college and whatnot and need something to focus on. So, I started focusing on bodybuilding. I did a couple shows. I really liked that. You know, I was training people. I got my master's in kinesiology, and I think through my years, that was about uh, eight years ago, I really realized that the majority of people are not bodybuilders, right? The majority of people are not even performance, but they are people that just want to be healthier. It's someone who wants to feel good naked, right? It's... um, Who doesn't? Yeah, I mean, come on. (laughs) Or it's someone who, they just really need an extra help, and so, and I think they don't realize, you know, what they're maybe going wrong in or how they can optimize things. You know, some people be in the gym, right? They're tracking their food and still they're not seeing changes, but it's little things like hydration, um, sleep, emotionally, where are you at? You know, the stress, Mm -hmm. whether your job is causing you so much stress that your body's not gonna allow you to change. All those things come in Mm -hmm. and majority of people have something else also going on, whether it's genetics, right? Or if it's from before when they weren't trying to be healthy, what they're kind of dealing with. Um, a lot of us are on medications and just really kind of learning how the whole picture plays in. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Thank you. And, you know, the, th- the thing about health and wellness that, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, focus a lot on what doctors say, mm-hmm. right? You know, and that's obviously we work with a lot of doctors, Laura especially. Um, and, you know, we've, we've had Dr. Redden on obviously to talk about some things, not necessarily this topic, but anyway, people go to their doctors for, you know, health advice all the time. Like, what does your doctor say? You know, that's, I think one of the reasons why like Dr. Oz got so popular, right? Mm -hmm. Because he was giving people general advice, but he's a doctor. So why shouldn't you listen to him? You know what I mean? Um, And, you know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't listen to your doctor, but you know, how often do you see your doctor, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 I mean, most people, especially young people, you know, might not even have a a GP, you know, they might not even have, um, somebody that they, you know, know, and that knows them well Mm -hmm. to go and, and ask these questions to, you know, so I think, uh, people just develop a very, you know, close relationship with their trainer typically, you know, because we walk with them every step of the way on, on their health journey, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, we get to know them real well. Yes. yes. So, you know, like I said, we, we do obviously coach a lot of athletes here and that's what we're known for. But, you know, most people are surprised when they tell them, when I tell them how many, you know, general health and, and fitness clients I still work with, you know, mm-hmm. reason being I enjoy it, you know, and sure. they, they put in work just like the athletes do. It's just, you know, a little bit of a different approach. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, we see these people on a weekly basis oftentimes, or we communicate with them at least on a weekly basis. Um, and so we, like Laura said, you know, we get to know them very well and, you know, they're comfortable asking us, you know, questions related to their, their health that, you know, they don't necessarily need a doctor to answer, you know, doctors have gone through tons and tons of school and they're very educated on what to do with, Mm. um, you know, say medications and treating, you know, treating, um, certain, you know, illnesses or, or what have you, but, Mm -hmm. you know, we're talking specifically about preventative medicine as well. Right. We're not just talking about like somebody, you know, has been, been diagnosed with, you know, 
diabetes or obesity or whatever. Like there's a lot of people that are kind of heading that direction that, you know, we, we are basically the, the front line and helping those people to, you know, change their lifestyle mm -hmm. and change their habits and things like that. And so it's a lot more simple than, than you might think, you know, it really surprises me at how many people, you know, do have just, you know, some have developed unhealthy patterns that, you know, like you mentioned, you know, I just kind of take those things for granted. Like I, I know what to do in certain mm -hmm. situations and, you know, a lot of the, you know, quote unquote general population out there, they just, you know, they don't even realize that what they're doing is, you know, harmful or they right. do realize it, but they just don't know how to fix it. You right. know, most, most people really do kind of understand like, oh yeah, I, I don't eat well or, mm -hmm. you know, oh yeah, I have a lot of stress at my job or, oh yeah, I really struggle sleeping or I don't exercise enough. Well, you know, it's our job to make a plan and then reinforce it and, and guide the way. Would you agree? Yeah. Which is crazy because I don't think people, I think there's a stereotypical nature with traders and we've talked about this on the podcast before, why we're doing this podcast mm -hmm. here at the Mecca. Because we know the truth. You have a trainer who's so adept at knowing all of those different things that people don't play into their lives being a health a decreaser when it comes to emotional stress and sleep and all that kind of stuff. But we're here to help with all of that. You don't need to be some guy who wants to come out here, look show ready all the time, and just like be an Instagram model. Mm -hmm. we, want, we want people who, who want to be healthy and take that right. seriously. Yeah, and you want to feel good all the time. And, you know... I think Eric touched on it too, is the word guide, okay? Mm -hmm. We are the experts, but a, a coach or a trainer, we're really here to guide you, right? We, you, you already know the things, right, that are healthy. Mm -hmm. And then we're also going to reinvent that for you. We're gonna create your own individual plan, but also we're here to guide you through it. We know there's gonna be ups and downs. We know it's gonna be hard to break bad patterns. Um, some of us have already done that ourselves, but we are here to guide you and really help you and tailor it. You know, your life may change. Maybe you get pregnant after you started mm. training. Maybe your job changed, you know, um, and just we are here to absolutely be that guide and that person to help you navigate. Right. Because right. you on. mentioned, Eric, doctors, you, you see them very rarely, very, but you right. guys, and like you said, from, from the beginning until whenever you, right. hopefully you never stop, but it's a weekly, at minimum, weekly right. contact. Right. And that you need somebody like that. Yeah. And I think the, you know, one of the big things, so I'll give you an example with all this, like one of the main things that we help people do typically, and this is everybody is scheduling, you know, we, a lot of us, you know, like my life is run on a schedule basically, <laughs> you know, right. Sure. You, you got things to do, you put them in your schedule. Right. And that's how a lot of people like to function. And that's how everybody, you know, needs to kind of organize themselves in order to, you know, accomplish certain things. Right. So, you know, that's a big thing that we are always helping people do is organize their schedule because they might know, oh yeah, I need more sleep. Well, you know, we can educate them on how they might want to prioritize that and why they might want to prioritize that and mm -hmm. stop putting it on the back burner, you yes. know? So they say, you know, oh, well, I only, you know, I sleep five hours a night and, mm -hmm. You know, and we're just like, well, that's not going to cut it. Let's right? get you up there a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're typically recommending like at least seven hours of sleep, right? Seven for, hours, everyone for, listening. For most adults, right? Seven. Hunter, do you get that with the babies? No, you know, I try my best. <laughs> I can't say I'm right. perfect. And but I, that's I, the thing I've worked on with Eric is, is sleep. Right. Absolutely. Right. So, you know, we're, we're looking at, you know, making that as a, as kind of a blanket general recommendation mm -hmm. is, you know, you need to sleep seven hours. So how do you, how do you do that? How do you put that into practice? Right? Well, you know, you definitely don't want to stay up late drinking every night, you know, yeah, that wouldn't, yeah, I mean, that that's, all. that's not going to happen. Right. <laughs> so, you know, we problem solve, like, you know, when, when can you go to bed? When can you wake up? You know, when can you be fitting exercise into your schedule? You know, a lot of people you know, they might have a, a nine to five job and it's like, well, you got to, you know, pick your poison basically because you got to get it in somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. You got to figure out like, do you want to go to bed later and work out after work and sleep in a little bit more and go straight to work? Or do you want to fit workouts in in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to prioritize going to bed on time and, you know, not staying out too late, not staying up too late. Right. Um, just little things like that make a huge difference in the way people feel. And until they really get that, 
you know, reinforcement and, and the, the scheduling aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it, you know, it doesn't just happen. And really a lot of it comes down to discipline, you know, right. We're here to definitely, you know, re, uh, constantly reinforce having discipline type behaviors. With Accountability that is huge. And, you know, looking at all those factors, like we talk about, so we use, Um, an app to track everything, right? We want to see where their sleep is at, their hydration, their activity, and then also their mood. And you can track it over a a number of days or even months and see how it's improving, like Eric said. Mm -hmm. Is your mood improving now that we're getting more sleep, you know? Um, As your steps go up, you know? Not just your weight going down. We don't wanna just focus on that, but overall how you're feeling is huge, right? Mm -hmm. Because then you're gonna be better at work, you're gonna be better in your relationships, your family time, et cetera. Mm Um, and so just looking at all those things and sometimes that's all people need to see is be able to see the change and understand it And so that that coach or that guide really helps you do that, right? So it Then uh, we talk about this as it's a, it's an overall encompassing thing in your life your health your overall health and wellness Which I think some people can come um, Into this and be like there's so many things I have to work on like this is my list I got to track mm-hmm. my food. I got to sleep this long. This is when I got to work out I got to make time for my family stuff like that Eric, what would be your suggestion? I mean, you talked about we just schedule. You got to work right. on your schedule and be disciplined with it. But how would someone come to you? Um, and if they're like really nervous about it, what would you tell them? You know, I would definitely encourage them to not be nervous because it is a slow process. You mm-hmm. know, especially if you're somebody coming here that has you know a lot of changes that you need to make. Mm-hmm. A lot of the changes can be pretty simple, you know, and, and not be a a huge burden on, on your life. You know, there's just, like you said, certain behaviors that might need to change, you know, everybody's got the same 24 hours in a day and you've got to have balance. So if you're working 40 hours a week, what are you doing, you know, and, and all those hours that are left, you right. know, cause there's a lot of hours left. It's a lot of hours mm-hmm. left. I mean, you know, eight hours a day, five days a week. So what are you doing on the weekends? You know, what are you doing before and after work? What are you doing during your lunch breaks? You know, oftentimes, um, you know, people that have a lot of habits to, to change, you know, it can be a simple thing like changing what you're eating for lunch. You know, people go out and get fast food for lunch. Hey, don't go get fast food for lunch, you know? And a lot of people know that, you Mm -hmm. know, that that might not be a good habit, but they also like getting fast food for lunch. So mm-hmm. what are some solutions, you know what I mean, to, right. you know, to, to fix that? Like, you know, we're not here to tell people they can't eat fast food at all, but, you know, it, mm-hmm. it definitely shouldn't be a daily occurrence, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. Um, so, you know, I would definitely tell people to not stress about it and that, you know, getting everything in it could actually be easier than you might suspect, mm-hmm. you know? It really is simple things like on the weekends, instead of just, you know, hanging around on the couch, do something active. You know, you've got to learn how to, you know, enjoy active activity, you know, and being active. And it doesn't have to be anything, anything crazy. No, just go out there, go on a walk or or something like that. Yeah. Go for a walk, go, go out, go for a hike, do some sightseeing, you know, Mm -hmm. pick activities that are you know, physically active, you know, I think that, you know, at this point, all of my activities are, are physically active. (laughs) And part of that reason is because, you know, I want to be, you know, obviously getting family time and I want to be, you know, in enjoying my time away from, from work and and all that. But I also know that, you know, it's going to be better for me to, to do that. And also to teach my kids to, to do all of those healthy activities. So, you know, on the weekends, I'm definitely, you know, in the summer, you know, mountain biking, hiking, you know, it's just spending time outside, taking my kids to the playground, chasing after them, um, you know, horseback riding, all these like these activities that are, you know, definitely more physically active. You know, I'm far less inclined to, to sit indoors, but even in the winter, you know, doing things like skiing or, you know, still you know, getting outside, even though it's cold, you know, is is actually really, really important, especially if you have your, you know, a couple of sunny days here or there, you can't be afraid to go out and get get a little cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, just put, put a coat on and go get some vitamin D. Once you you start moving, you're going to warm up anyway. That's it. Yeah. I mean, I know I do. I sweat as soon as I stand outside. (laughs) (laughs) Laura, uh, with physical activity, what's your favorite stuff to do? Um, 
So I honestly, I like being outside. I grew up in the outdoors. You know, my parents were super active. They were cross country skiers. They were canoe racers. So I grew up with activity, not really being in the gym. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, my dad would challenge me to push up contests and whatnot, but I didn't start lifting until I was in high school. Okay. So I, I'll take the dog for a run. Um, I'll drag Zach on a hike if he'll, if he'll come with me, probably <laughs> after we hit the gym. But, yeah. you know, I like to be outside. I like to get sun. Um, whenever I go home, I'm canoeing with my parents or kayaking oh that's fun um, so yeah i like to be out there absolutely that's awesome um so these these things that you say there's kind of simple changes in your life and stuff like that for those people right now listening to this they're like okay i'm motivated i realize i got to get my butt going what are some of those things that these that these people can do daily that you would recommend eric to start right now uh, you know, number one, the easiest thing is definitely monitoring your nutrition. I mean, that's going to be key. You know, mm -hmm. you, you can't outwork a bad diet. That's absolutely true, mm -hmm. you know, especially with a busy schedule. So, you know, definitely start monitoring your nutrition. And there's a lot of ways that you can go about that. You know, we have an app that we use um, that's, you know, kind of proprietary for us that we use to coach people and track their nutrition in. Mm -hmm. So that's great. There's also a lot of other options out there to, you know, download an app and see what your overall caloric intake is. You know, you don't necessarily even need to change it at first. Most people just by recording it or writing it down are going to make positive changes just by tracking in general because they're gonna be like oh yeah like they're gonna start they actually to see what they're gonna happening. start to realize like how many calories they're intaking or like oh man coke has how many grams of carbs right. like oh man or it's how many calories and it's just a drink you know so changing little things like that um is is obviously very important but the other thing is step goals um you know and we always talk about steps steps are everywhere right We'll always post, you know, we have clients taking an insane amount of steps or whatever. There's always something I'm restoring about someone right. showing their watch. <laughs> right. Take yeah. some pride in it. So, yeah, I would, I would suggest, you know, get some sort of, you know, Apple Watch, Fitbit, whatever. Even a step counter on your phone. Yep. Even a step counter on your phone and start monitoring how active you are, you know, and that's a great way to just monitor your general activity levels is tracking steps, you know? And so we kind of have a, a blanket statement, you know, most of our people are getting a minimum of 10,000 a day, right? That's kind of the, the benchmark that, mm -hmm. that is set out there. You know, it's pretty common knowledge like, oh yeah, 10,000 steps a day. It seems like a good number, right? Right. Um, but it really is, you know, and you know, to go further, um, I would, I would definitely have people take three 10 minute walks a day. Um, the, can, people can do that. Oh, anybody can do that. You know, and I challenge people to do that even, you know, from the, the beginners, like just getting here all the way up to, you know, any competitive athlete that we train taking three 10 minute walks a day is not only a good way to help you just be more active and get steps in, but it's also great for, you know, musculoskeletal issues, lower back health, things like that, because we sit all the time. All of us, we're sitting right now, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, my posture. The, the, yeah, the, the nature the of it, yeah, it, you know, the nature of life these days is we are all in front of computers for the most part, you yeah. know? And so, you know, to combat that, focusing on getting up and walking three times a day mm. is really, really good, you know, for not only activity, but mental health, you know, you just breaks up your routine, helps you think more clearly. You can think about, you know, things that you need to get done or problem solve, whatever. But, you know, those are kind of the two, my, my top two, just for general health purposes mm -hmm. is track your food yep. and get 10,000 steps or track mm -hmm. your steps. Right. Yes. Those are kind of my two. And just like two. you said, it is, it's a process. And I think the, our society wants to have that Instagram moment. I don't know how else you'd describe it, where you take a picture of yourself and you look perfect to post online immediately. Right. Or just like the, it's, it's all in the process. Right. Which is so hard for people. So Laura, when it comes to like the process, do you focus on the main goal? Like this is my main goal or do you focus like, all right, this is the action, the next step I need to take to be better. Yes, absolutely. So the biggest thing is, what's your vision, right? That's kind of the first question I ask people is, why are you here? And it's really interesting, and you give people time to answer it. You can have uncomfortable silence, right? Some people right away say, lose weight. And I say, why, though? What is mm. your why? 
and a lot of people will say I want to lose weight for my kids um, there's older people I want to be able to play with my grandkids right run them around um, and just what is the why so that's your main vision right that's whether it's a three-year five-year ten-year goal and then in order to get there there's gonna be small actions like you said small steps so starting with something like Eric said first just start tracking your nutrition right um, then maybe start with the steps then actually get a gym membership, right? There's just these, these little things. And yeah, it's one okay. of those things. <laughs> at the, the Mecca gym. At the Mecca gym. Plug. Um, <laughs> but so it's, it's you have to create small steps, right? And whether you're going to have achievement with that or you have to reevaluate those small steps, those small goals in order to reach the bigger goal, right? That vision that you have that you're mm -hmm. trying to achieve. And the vision can change. Everything can change. It's always mm -hmm. going to be fluid. Um, but setting small things first and then going to the larger picture right on definitely i'd say you know with with those small steps too it's you know it's a daily thing you know people mm -hmm. get all wrapped up and like oh you know i need to lose x amount of pounds and this and that and you know i talk a lot about you know setting those process oriented goals and process oriented actions you know yeah that's really what it comes down to because on a day-to-day -day basis you know you gotta you know participate and you've got to check those blocks off each day and that's going to accumulate and you know and all add up to you know your your main goal but like she said even if you have that main goal and you don't have a why it's going to be really difficult to achieve that goal so you've got to you've got to have the why that's that really really why. important yeah the, and that's i think a lot of people always say i don't have motivation Mm. How do I get motivation? And that's something where if you have that why and you remind yourself of that why, you know, every day when you're tired and you don't want to go to the gym or when you don't want to track your food, like reminding yourself of that why is absolutely huge. It's key. Absolutely. I think there was some, I, I don't remember it at all. There was some t statistic and stuff like these videos on YouTube. Most of these highly watched videos are these motivationals. People right. like go, it's just like, I need motivation. I'm going to go watch this person right. do this, which is, which is yes. awesome. Yeah, and you get the chills and this stuff, but that doesn't stick with you. Like Eric no. talks about this all the time. There's motivation. You got, if you have your why though, and that's in the back of your mind, and be honest with yourself. Like people wanna say, oh, I wanna lose weight, so I look good, when necessarily. No, I wanna lose weight, so my mental health is better, so I'm confident in who I am as I am. Right. And that, I mean, then that can drive you a little bit more. And then, like you said, your whys change too. Mm -hmm. you're like you reach some goal and you feel like, oh, I feel good about this. Let's move on. Let's level up. Right. You use the Let Level Up song on your Instagram <laughs> all the time. I love that My song. My wife and I love it. Yeah. Level up. <laughs> because it's just got I good think Zach hates it. it. He's always like, really? Again? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yes, Zach, because I'm leveling up. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's an incredible thing. So people out there, you guys can do this. Listeners, you can do this. Come talk to us at the Mecca. Eric Cafferty, Laura for sure, and and talk talk this out. Laura, I did want to ask you though. You did mention this when when we were kind of talking about what to do for this podcast. The stories that you have with working with these people, especially when they come into the clinic and stuff like that. What's been kind of the most powerful one that you've seen? Um, so, so there's a couple different things, but I'm gonna go with what the theme is. And the theme is so how it works at the clinic is your post, you know, open heart surgery or your post heart attack. Um, you had an asthma exacerbation, right? Um, so then you you get a referral to our clinic, and what happens is you come in for an intake, and you're talking to the nurse and the exercise physiologist. Um, and we're talking about what we're about. And at the clinic, you know, they're, they're really good and they're about um, changing your lifestyle, lifestyle, lifestyle. And what people say more than anything is, wow, I didn't realize that eating McDonald's every day would give me a heart attack. And I think maybe we think that we know that, but I don't think we realize it, unfortunately, until some bad things happen or, wow, I didn't know that. I needed to work out my heart in order to make it better, right? Because the heart is a muscle. It's a pump. It is our main engine. Mm -hmm. um, and if we're not challenging that engine, it's not getting better. It's just sitting at idle, okay? Um, and so that's kind of the biggest theme is these are things that I could have changed, right? It's not my genetics. It's not because dad had a bad heart, so now I got a bad heart. No, it's really your lifestyle that is affecting your health. For sure. Yeah. yeah. You're in control. You know, I watched... You know, one of my favorite follows is David Goggins, right? Oh, yes. I mean, he's the man, right? <laughs> he's the absolute man. 
And so when we're talking about, you know, these things and talking about these whys, you know, if you don't follow David Goggins, like I'm not making anything off of this. I just think he's a mm. badass. Like go follow that guy. Cause he's, he's a straight shooter. And, uh, uh, anyway, one of his most recent posts was, you know, somebody emailed him about finding their why, you know, which, you know, yeah, every, everybody's got, got to find that why, right. We're just talking about it. And, and, you know, somebody asked him like, how do I find my why? And he's basically like, man, if you need to see a counselor to find your why, man, you got problems. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. You need to just man up and, and, and cut the crap. And, you know, basically you're just being lazy because your why is right in front of your face. Mm-hmm. You know, for pretty much everybody, you don't need to search far and wide to find a why. And especially for being healthy and being in shape, you know, you, that why is more oftentimes than not sitting right in front of your eyes and you just need to develop the discipline in order to achieve that why, you know? And so that's definitely one thing that we, we do a lot and that we specialize in is, you know, not only helping people to identify that why, but, you know, telling them the level of discipline that they're going to need in order to get that because, you know, making changes in, in your body composition and your lifestyle is not easy. You mm-hmm. know, there's a lot of stats out there that say, you know, it takes 66 or more days to change a habit. Right. So it's not like a, a short term deal. You know, you don't just do these things for one day and, you know, problem solved. Right. right. No, it takes it takes months, years, you know. So for a lot of us that have been, you know, doing this for years, you know, we're here for people to learn from us and how we you know, engage in these healthy behaviors, you know, and that's the other thing too, is it's really tough to learn from, or I mean, it would be tough for me if I was in, you know, somebody's shoes, like looking, Hey, I need to get in shape. And then, you know, you go, you go see a trainer who doesn't have their shit together. And you're just like, huh, you know, does, does this person that you're reaching out to as a resource, like, do they, do, do they, they have, have their have do they have their own stuff figured out and there's mm-hmm. shockingly enough you know a lot of them don't right they you know they they preach something that they just can't even follow themselves you know which is you know i it blows my mind to be honest it's so crazy hypocrisy and it's, cra- just, it's uh, yes exactly <laughs> but um yeah you know it's very important to get education from people who actually live the lifestyle that you want to live, you know, surround yourself with the people that, you know, that live, you know, the way that, that you should be living, right. Healthy, Mm -hmm. you know, don't engage in, in unhealthy habits and and things like that. So, you know, lose all your friends that go out and and drink on the weekends (laughs) at the bars, you know, you know, lose, lose a lot of the bad influences. And that's another barrier that people run into is just their crowd, you know, whether it be family or friends or whatever, yeah. the, environment the, in. the environment is so key, you know, and, and being around other people that, you know, are, are trying to achieve those similar things. You know, I always joke about, you know, the, you know, lift, lifting heavy and, and, you know, the Mecca, I thought I lifted heavy until, you know, I opened the Mecca and then I started training around a bunch of power lifters all the time, not just online, you know? Right. And I'm like, Oh man, I got to step my game up. You mm-hmm. know, I guess I got to start lifting, uh, lifting a little bit heavier weights. I'm going to be uh, showed up here real quick. Right. <laughs> um, and that still happens, but, um, far less, though. far, far less. Right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you look around, you know, and you see these people that are, that are also, you know, walking the walk and, and, you know, working out hard and things like that. And you're like, oh, it's just normal. Like it, it does, it makes it easier for you. And, you know, you, we, we are like herd animals, you know, we're kind of, and we're creatures of habit, right? We kind of do all the things that our friends do and that our family does. So, you know, helps to set a good example for your kids, set a good example for everybody around you. You start doing those healthy things and, you know, if you're hanging out with bad influences, you know, that's another thing that's an easy, an easy change to make is just, you know, cut, cut that crap out. Environment is huge. When I first started personal training, I was finishing my master's and I was a full-time bartender. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. There you go. So previous Laura, um, (laughs) I could drink a lot, right? And I thought I was in shape. 
And um, I was going through that lifestyle, right? I wasn't getting a lot of sleep because you work at night. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I drank a lot. Um, Probably didn't eat good. You know, I knew what healthy was. And I was, you know, pouring my clients shots at night, getting them to eat pizza, and then making them do burpees the next day. No, job security. No, it was horrible. (laughs) But I think that you really start realizing. That's the hypocrisy there, Laura. No, exactly. And so I I started realizing, like, what did I want to do with my life, right? What Mm -hmm. was my why? And um, I needed to make a change, right? I I really enjoyed helping people. Yeah, bartending was fun, but I wanted to be a full-time trainer and I wanted to really walk the walk. I didn't want to be that hypocrisy. And so, you know, I made that shift and I I lost a lot of people in my life and it was really hard, right? Mm -hmm. It was a big lifestyle change and I got pretty lucky and I met my husband now at the time then and he he was one of those good influences, you know? Mm -hmm. He was done going out, et cetera. And so you will be, it will be hard if you have to change your environment, um, but remembering your why, what you want, you know? And then every day it'll get better. You'll start feeling better when you wake up, you know. You'll wake up one day and if you're someone who's like, you're chronically fatigued, but Mm -hmm. then you start, you know, getting better sleep, you start drinking enough water, hydration, Mm -hmm. one day you're going to wake up and you'll be like, wow, okay, my eyes aren't puffy. Mm -hmm. Like, this is is good. And then it's going to get better and better. So just knowing that it's going to be hard, changing that environment, right? But knowing again, tying it all back to the why and making those choices. And focusing on the positive things too, you Mm -hmm. know, like she mentioned, you know, seeing positive changes is really, you know, the best reinforcement that you can get, but you also don't want to dwell on the negatives and self-deprecate. I mean, that's one of the biggest problems, you know, is people like, oh, you know, they just throw themselves under the bus constantly, you know, and they, they dwell on, you know, bad behaviors like, oh, I went out and I ate bad or, oh, I went out, you know, Mm. all of these, these negative things. And you know, you just have to stop dwelling on, on that and, and start focusing on positive things that you've done, you know, yeah. and in your self-reflection, which is key, you know, you need to identify those positive things and keep them coming. My you know? favorite quote, and I say this to my patients and my clients is the body hears what the mind says. Oh, I like that a lot. And so I've you look heard in that the mirror yeah, and if you're saying, man, I look fat, you know, oh, I look like crap, et cetera. That is just negative, negative oh, yeah. reinforcements coming at you. If you're like, oh, I ate that piece of cake. Now I got to go run three miles. Like negativity is, it's the death of everything, right? And so your body is going to hear what your mind says and you have to, you have to treat your body with respect, right? You have to build it up. So absolutely. Positivity is key. And don't use exercise as punishment. Never. It's not, it's not a good it's plan. A I think uh, everyone rewind. <laughs> Do the, do the 10 seconds back button and then uh, listen to Eric say that over and over again. Eric, say it again. One more time. <laughs> what did I even just say? You just, just said. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, don't use exercise as a punishment. Don't use yeah. exercise. We are extremely blessed to live in a day and age where we get to exercise and we get to choose our activities that we do and we get to choose the foods that we eat. Not everybody is so lucky and so fortunate, you know? Um, and I think that more people need to realize that. And a lot of people that have traveled and and you know seen things in the world military guys and all that they've you know they they definitely you talk to somebody like that and they certainly do not take what we have you know for granted and you know and nobody should because it is a real blessing to choose to get up in the morning and be able to participate in some sort of physical activity that you enjoy you know and not have to you know worry about you know, much of anything serious, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? For the, for the most part, a lot of us, the things that we stress about, you know, are, are completely, you know, things that shouldn't matter. You know what I mean? It's just, we, we all have these stresses like that, that really in the grand scheme of things don't matter. Um, now granted, I'm not saying that's everything we, there's, Mm -hmm. there's definitely things that are right. That are stressful and whatever. And stress is okay. It's not like you should try and avoid it. Right. It's, it's normal, but you know, you focus on the things that you can control, number one, and just feel blessed that you can get up and, and come to a gym like this, or you can get up and go for a walk outside and you're safe and, you know, you have the opportunity to make a healthier lifestyle, you know? Yeah, I love that. And definitely some of the people, 
and why we have trainers and those positive influences in our life to remind us of those things. But also like, um, I, I love when people, I mean, I do this myself is like, you are having a bad day maybe, and you are so tempted to look at yourself in the mirror and be like, you are the worst. But then you go back and maybe look at a, a picture you took a while ago that you track, or you look back at these meals that you've kept consistent or something like that. And you're able to just boost that like real quick. And that's the importance of keeping track of your food, yeah. getting those steps in. Cause you see that proof that your current self, even though your current mindset is, um, self deprecating, it's, you were able to consistently make it through. And that, that one quote where it's, um, like you've survived a hundred percent of your hard days or how it goes, something like that. It's like, you can do it again, even though today seems like hard, you could do it again. And I love that. I appreciate that you two uh, speak in that. And then obviously for you listeners out there, these two are the prime examples of that, that just live that life, walk the walk. And um, I just encourage you all to, to reach out to them, get, get a Mecca membership because we're just not blowing smoke. This is what we do around here. It's obviously proof through this examples here. Um, we got a couple, uh, just a couple questions off of the, the Instagram. That I think we could just answer real quick. They're pretty, uh, I think we answered most of them, but one here specifically, or there's two that asks about, uh, <laughs> here's one specifically. Why does everyone get out? Why does everyone else get more food than me? Why does everyone get more food than me? Do you want to take, <laughs> you can take this. Um, so we are all unique individuals, right? Um, not only do we have unique goals, but we are all absolutely unique individuals and our nutritional needs are going to change over time depending on those goals and depending on what stage you are at so my first thing is to say don't focus on everyone else's stuff focus on your own um and it's going to just depend on where you're at and our goal is always going to be essentially supporting your body right keeping you healthy and then helping you maintain those needs otherwise that you want so whether you're trying to lose body fat right whether you're trying to gain strength or change your muscle but everything is going to be unique to you and eric i'm sure you have a point yeah i mean the bottom line is you know everybody like you said is an individual right everybody's at a different stage in the game everybody's body composition is different everybody's height is slightly different but even if you're looking at somebody who is you know, say your same height, similar weight, similar body composition, you're still going to have some metabolic differences. You know, exercise obviously plays a large role in that. So somebody might just have a different personality type and they might be a busy bee buzzing around, you know, mm-hmm. all over the place. And they're, you know, just by nature, they're just moving more, you know, they're burning more calories or, you know, there might be some sort of metabolic adaption that you have gone through at some point in time, right? You're, you're at a a different set point than they are, which, you know, set points are very complicated things, mostly dictated by adipose tissue and hormone release, things like that. So, you know, there's a lot of different reasons. Speaking of hormone release, you're, you know, your, your hormone profile, your, you know, your, your thyroid level, like there's a lot of different things. And just because somebody eats more or less than you doesn't mean that they are, you know, more healthy or they're, you know, they're better or worse or whatever. It's just different, you know, Mm -hmm. um, and different amounts of, you know, consumption, different, uh, amounts of, uh, well, you know, burn calorie burn each day has their positives and negatives. You know, you could take, uh, you know, if you want to use a 180 pound male as an example, you know, one guy might be eating, I'm just throwing these numbers out there, 3000 calories a day. Another might be eating, you know, have to eat 4,500 calories a day. right. Like a lot of calories is like no apparent reason why this person has to eat so much. And right. that, you know, the person eating less might be like, well, that's not fair. Like he gets to eat more. Well, that person that's eating more might be like, well, that's not fair. This is a real pain in my ass to eat this much food. It's so true. That the, can get hard. <laughs> it is. So, you know, the grass is, uh, the grass is often appears greener on the other side. Mm-hmm. I would encourage somebody to just embrace their own process. And yeah. you got to remember, like, you know, I get comments about certain clients of mine that are just, you know, they just have super fast metabolisms, you know, um, Maria is a good example. She's a, a coach here and, prepping her for a show, you know, she ended prep. There were times where she got, you know, sub 2000 calories for weeks at a time, but Mm -hmm. 
for the most part, like at the end of her prep, she was eating almost as much as she was before she started, you know, up in the 24, 2500 calorie range, which, you know, for a hundred and con contest prep weight towards the end, she's around 130 pounds. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but she's tall and, but still, yes. From a numbers perspective, perspective, I will tell you right now, I was way lower than that yeah. when I was 130 that's, pounds. That's like, yeah, that's a free, that's freak status, calorie burn. That's, you that's know what wild, I mean? Yeah. And people, you know, hear comments all the time like, "That's not fair. How is that even possible?" Mm -hmm. And blah blah blah. And it's like, well, you know, it doesn't. It yeah. It and there there are a lot of physiological reasons and explanations for that, but. My point with her is just because she's eating, you know, a thousand calories more than another person might be at the same stage mm -hmm. does not mean that she feels the effects any less. So people automatically assume that, oh, well, it's not as hard for somebody that's able to eat more calories because they have more capacity. Well, that's not necessarily true because they still feel the effects the mm -hmm. same way. They still feel... You know, especially if you're talking contest prep, they still feel fatigued. They still feel hunger. It's still just as hard. What I will say is somebody that has done the homework, built their capacity up like that, their potential for getting leaner is much better. Oh. And it's not that they don't have to push as hard. They will just be able to get further, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it doesn't mean that it hurts any less, you know, right. Um, and it doesn't mean that, you know, even if you do the homework and, and go through a, a very extensive upregulation in your off season and do all the right things, check all the right boxes, right? Say you get your calories up to 20 times body weight, which is a shit ton. And <laughs> you, you know, you're training hard, you're doing everything right. Your metabolism's on fire. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to diet on more calories. That's not a guarantee. Mm -hmm. And it's oftentimes not the case. You know, what that means is you're setting yourself up to be able to get further down the process, you know, and you're not going to hit uh, maybe a hard wall as soon. Or, you know, the other thing that we like to do is, you know, set people up to be stage lean early in the process. So maybe we take them through different, you know, calorie ranges and, and cycles in order to, you know, get them to a leaner body composition before they even start prep. You okay. know what I mean? So, I mean, there's a lot of different tactics and right. we won't need to go into that on this podcast because <laughs> I could Maybe talk for one. hours. Eric's so going on tangent. tangent. Yeah. Shocker. But, Shocker. Um, you know, it's the curse of having but, so much knowledge. It really it's, is. It's <laughs> vomit right now. But, um, you know, just because somebody is eating more than you, doesn't really mean anything you know there's been times where i would you know prefer to to eat less mm -hmm. because you know eat having to prepare that much food can can get to be a burden yes. you know and you have That's to true. You gotta get. constantly so you know there are times when you know everybody wants to be the guy with the fast metabolism on the weekend when you're having a barbecue right right but on the weekdays when you're you know head down, working hard, trying to get stuff done, who wants to slam like, you know, that much food all day long? You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't really have time to do that. Right. You right. know, I mean, I do it at times if I need to, <laughs> right. but you know, at that juncture, you got to be creative, right. With getting your food in and prioritize. right. And, and also just eating the things that are going to be, you know, maybe more dense calories or less dense calories, depending on what side of the spectrum you're on. Mm. And I would say that mu most people are much more normal than they think they are in terms of metabolic rate and, and things like that. Like there's, there's very few people that are really far out of the spectrum. Right. I would say. Well, good. So don't compare yourself, people. Talk to your trainer. It's it's a, it's a personal thing. Which and spend it? and spend more time, um, you know, in a caloric surplus and training hard. You know, people that are eating less like that and they want to eat more, they're oftentimes spending too much time worrying about being in like yeah. being leaner. Working mm -hmm. with a coach, right? Working with a coach who can help you really navigate that is huge and understanding when you need to push, right? When you need to push those limits. But like Eric saying, when you need to maybe be in the surplus. So absolutely. Yeah. Spend spend time in uh, you know, increasing your calories and just enjoying the energy that you get from an increase in calories, mm -hmm. even if it means you're staying at a little bit of a higher 
you know, body fat percentage, then you all might part prefer of the process there. All part of the process. process. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, the thing is, is these these questions. Um, I hope you, they got answered because they throughout this whole thing, we're talking about motivation, working with a trainer, food. Everyone has questions about food. Most of it was, why can't I have more food? I hope you just got that answer. <laughs> it's all part of the process. Okay. You're unique too. <laughs> yes, very very much. Um, well, Laura, thank you so much for your time and your expertise. Eric, as always, absolutely. Uh, I don't have any more questions. Um, is there any kind of, actually, I do have one more question uh, for both of you. What is uh, your favorite thing to do with a client? And I ask this because people get so nervous about going with a trainer or anything like that. It's not scary, it's fun. So what's your favorite thing to do with a client? Eric. Oh, that's a that's a loaded question. I know. I was like, go um, first, Eric, go first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, it, de it depends on, on what, what type of client we're talking about. But I would say something that I really enjoy doing as a trainer is correcting exercise technique and evaluating movement patterns and things like that. Um, and we tend to like the things that we're good at, right? Right. Um, you know, I, that's something that I can do better than most others. So mm -hmm. I think that's probably one reason why I enjoy it because I can teach people things and I can see things that not many others can. Yeah. So that's fun for me because it tends to get a lot of positive reinforcement from clients like, oh man, I've been wondering that for so long and yeah. finally I found somebody who can explain it to me and fix it yeah. and blah. So I love that. Um, you know, I, I really do um, just love being a part of people's journey, a part of the process for people. You know, I know that's very generalized, but I do really being like present. being present, being a resource. I genuinely care about, you know, all of our clients, not just my own. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I really like seeing like when Laura's clients are having success, it makes me feel really good because you know, it, it makes me, you know, feel like I've, I've done something right in the world. Like I've created a place where people can come and have success and have fun and, you know, achieve whatever it is they want to achieve. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of our people has, has done that. And it just, it, that sort of thing makes me feel really good. Right on. Laura, how about you? Well, I love Eric's answer, but I won't take it. So <laughs> that, that aha moment in form correction or learning movement patterns is amazing, mm -hmm. right? That click, like, oh, I felt that, or yeah. wow, how to engage that. But honestly, and this also plays into Eric's second answer, um, we must be a lot alike, but it's getting to know <laughs> you, right? Mm -hmm. I, I truly enjoy getting to know you and making your unique plan. Yeah. Okay, if you're a mom who's breastfeeding, right, you're about to rip your hair out, you don't have time to do stuff, I want to help you. And whether that's, like Eric said, take three 10-minute walks a day, I will be there with you. Or if you're a competitor and it's your first show and I get to be backstage with you. Um, I really like when we can make that change in someone's life because it's always going to be different. And you'll see that here in the Mecca when you come in everyone has a different goal there's so sure. many different kinds of people when i first moved to idaho um i looked up gyms right away and i was like oh mecca gym like it's just for big people like i could probably go there but i don't know if i want to go there and then i came in <laughs> uh -huh. and you hear this all the time i came in and i realized the mecca is so much more and there are people here for weight loss there are people here with musculoskeletal impairments you know there are people here that want to master powerlifting do competition and it's so amazing everyone's journey and everyone is your cheerleader and they're all on your team yeah all on your Definitely. team right. they are hyping you up on instagram they see you in here and you all of a sudden it gets quiet and you're like, oh, someone's maxing out. Like someone's about to do something pretty and cool. And then it gets really loud. And then it, it gets, gets really loud. loud. And I have chills right now thinking about it. But it just makes you feel so welcome and so empowered. So being part of that journey, like Eric said, seeing that and being involved in that is huge. Because that is one of the most motivating things. A lot of times, you know, I work at the clinic 10, 12 hours. And then I'll come here and train a client. And I don't really want to work out afterwards. Yeah, that's fair. But working with that client, they're here. You know, they got off work. They came. That is my motivation, too. So maybe that's a little selfish. I don't know. But I get motivated from you guys. So I really enjoy that, too. It's just being part of the journey. Amazing. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So, uh, I mean, the things I took from this, absolutely, are find your why. Uh, understand what it is. Go after it. Don't forget it. 
Uh, work with someone who knows what they're talking about and walks the walk, absolutely. And uh, know that it's a process, that it's gonna be slow. And I'm just gonna, to one point out, uh, first time deadlifting with Eric when we were training. I was like, wait, my back doesn't have to hurt? <laughs> that, was literally, that was my aha moment. And ever since then, I've done a powerlifting meet and it's been incredible. So I'm telling you guys, um, come come to the Mecca, see what we have to say, um, ask about our app. There's gonna be links down below. Um, and um, you know, take, take that lifestyle change, make it healthy, happy and healthy. Word. Love it, awesome. Thank you guys. Yes. We're out. Thank you for joining us on the Power of Lifting podcast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. For more content like this, follow Eric Cafferty and the Mecca Gym on all social media platforms.